Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So we got a lot of things to go over. Let's just jump right in. So today, as we take a look at the markets, I don't usually take a look at the markets per se, but it's I think it's important some days to actually just to give this relevance as time goes on and people look back at certain videos. So today we can see that there's quite a little bit of a drop going on. And uh, this is April 24th. It's around uh, high noon Eastern Standard Time. If you're watching this video or when we splice this up, you might see a little later <clears throat> and it might be much different, but uh, Bitcoin is down 3% 24 hours, 64,000. Actually, I think everything's down last 24 hours. Let me see if anything's up. Tron, ha, <laughs> uh, wow. Hedera's up, well, we'll talk about this. The uh, Hedera HBAR situation is still up 20%, but over the last hour, it's a sea of red. What's happening? Anybody's guess? Probably more uh, sellers than buyers, and I'm sure somebody will come up with some fantastic reason as to far as why this is actually dipping, but this is what we have. I really am not concerned about the short term. What I'm talking about today, and of course, the whole point of the thumbnail and title was really even, it's, it's hard to, to lose as we invest moving forward post having, and even like the losers win. I'm not saying that what I'm going to talk about right now are losers as far as crypto, but as far as like some of the fastest horses, definitely not. And what I want to take a look at was, of course, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't go forward, but I can go in reverse and just see how things have gone. Since we just had our halving on 19th of April, 2024, I want to take a look back uh, historically. And this is from CoinMarketCap, the historical reference as we take a look at the top 10 as of 17th of May, 2020, 17th of May, 2020. And what I can see here is that uh, this is, some of you are gonna laugh, but this is how it was back then. And we can see that uh, the top 10, it was Bitcoin, Ethereum, which hasn't changed too much, XRP, which could do no wrong. And of course the XRP community got hosed as time went on and they were entangled in the SEC uh, grips. And we'll talk about their loss and wins today. Tether, and then number five, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV, because back then everybody thought that everything that had to do with Bitcoin was going to be fantastic, and that didn't really turn out to be correct. Litecoin, Binance Coin, EOS, and Tezos, and then rounding out the next two is Stellar and Cardano and Chainlink and Monero and stuff like that. So what I want to do is just extrapolate that and just to see how things are as if we pulled forward and what we could have done. And again, like I like we talked about yesterday. We talked about dollar cost averaging and how that doesn't really work too well. I mean, it still works, uh, but it doesn't work as great as if you dynamic DCA. And we proved it. We took a look at uh, post having just the things to do and and uh, just watch the video. I don't, I don't, we don't have time for that here. That's outside the scope of this video itself. But I want to show you today is what would happen if we would have said, you know what, I'm going to take these top 10 because this is what I knew. Back then, that's that's what I know. Today, this is all you know. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, Solana, USD, staked either XRP and Dogecoin and TonCoin are in the top 10. So that's all you know. Next, in four years, it could be totally different as opposed to taking a look at this. That's why altcoins are so risky and that's why people talk about Bitcoin so much. So let's just take that historical reference and just do this. Let's just do a lump sum and throw in a thousand bucks Okay, a thousand dollars into the top ten as of uh, May seventeenth, twenty twenty. And in all honesty, even if you would have done that at that point, that's why I say it's kind of hard to lose. When I put this together this morning, I was like, "Damn, it's like almost impossible." I mean, it's possible. Trust me. Uh, I can, as, as as far as traders go, they have an, an an in inordinate ability to grasp or to take back defeat from the jaws of victory by not selling. So if I did $1,000, right? Again, roughly, I would put this on May 12th. Let's just do May 17th, just to keep things on the up and up as we just talked about. So May 17th, I put $1,000 in and I put it into Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Tezos, EOS. What was the other one? I think I missed one. Oh, Bitcoin SV. Let's see if I can add that in. Because da, da, da. that's Bitcoin Cash. It might not be here because, oh my God, it is. Well, congratulations. You've got Bitcoin SV. So 
even if you would do that and you put a thousand dollars in and didn't do anything because you're like i don't want a dca i got a thousand bucks look at the returns on <clears throat> let's take april 23rd uh you would have outperformed dollar cost averaging i'll tell you that right now bitcoin you're up 400 percent you invested a thousand you got 5500 it's pretty good xrp you would have you would have be bitcoin 481 percent ethereum 1044 percent wow it's pretty good and then bnb you would have crushed it crushed it at almost thirty thousand dollars but then what i want you to, to to notice is that even if you would have put it into i'm not going to say losers but let's be honest some of these totally underperformed uh tezos eos bitcoin cash litecoin and bitcoin sv you're still up 30 percent 84 percent 112 percent and 240 percent and also 451 percent so again th this is why i say like when we're doing these things like post having you're in the right place at the right time can i tell you what to invest in and how much to invest in and that it's going to be all right and and rainbows are going to shoot out of every no that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying if you just take a look back it's hard to screw this up and the only way you screw this up quite honestly even if let's see let's take november 2022 that's roughly uh the bottom look at this i didn't even think about this until right now november 24th 2022 you're still up 1700 percent on bnb you're still up 481 percent on ethereum XRP, you're up 100%, Litecoin, 80%, and Bitcoin, you're up 77%. Now, again, losers. Tezos, EOS, Bitcoin, Satoshi Vision, eh, Bitcoin Cash, you're down 50%, 60 to 80%. But it's it's tough. It, it's tough to, to screw this up moving forward. So that's just, that's just that piece. And I also want to show you this, because right now, because we're stuck in this time frame, we're stuck in this this zone of stasis where we think that okay, well, this is awful. Things are down three percent. We're we're kind of chopping sideways. What happened to having everything is supposed to go up? Ah, eh, it's not how it works. If you take a look here again, time in the market is much more important some days than timing the market. Everybody's down for the hour. As far as like Ethereum, Cardano, I mean everything in the top. 20 30 or something like that you're down over the hour you're all red congratulations over a day the only people that are up are algo for some misinformation quite honestly and maker i guess one week you're up but over one month you're down but here's the here's the great glorious thing about doing what you did in the bear market over the 200 day average or 200 days look how much you're up i mean you're up big time bitcoin you're up 131 percent what's on 200 you're up on Avalanche? Oh yeah, 250% for Avalanche. Solana, 500%, 180% for BNB, 104% for Maker, 117. I mean, you, you get where I'm going here. The only loser right now for the 200 day is Monero. And Monero gets gets crushed all the time because it's a privacy chain. And uh, the centralized exchanges don't want to list it because they don't want to deal with the SEC, even though they're a bunch of losers. I'm saying losers a lot today. I really shouldn't. It's very negative. And then of course, over one year, most people are up except for <laughs> Matic. So again, it's tough to be a loser, but people will say, but Rob, you don't understand. This time is different. It's so different because of the ETFs and how and how far we're going. I have to agree in some in some ways. Although I was kind of it was an interesting find. And I think most people know this, but it's 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 good to bring this to light. Here's the Bitcoin holdings over time. And you can see that in the beginning, it's all grayscale. This little blue mark right here, this nice little blue uh bar you can see that when this started on january 10th it was all grayscale and of course they started dumping and dumping and dumping so and but the whole thing i wanted to show you was that as far as like the total as far as bitcoin units it's six hundred twenty thousand, give or take six hundred twenty thousand. but if you notice over the first uh month or so it wasn't like there was a huge influx of people it was just grayscale dumping and other people buying mostly BlackRock and Grace, I mean, uh, BlackRock, FBTC, and what was the other one? <clears throat> Fidelity. So it wasn't, it's just like, it went from 620,000 to 650,000 over a month. It's just changing hands. Yes, it's a lot of volume, I get it. But then if we come over here, we can see that we're actually at around 820,000. So over the course of 
oh, three months or so, 200,000 have fallen into the hands of the ET efforts, which is fine. And uh, excuse me, 200,000 over three months. And just to take a look at it, just to kind of zone, just to kind of zoom in for a bit. April 23rd, there was a lot of outflows. Look at Grayscale, almost a thousand for as far as units. And then we've had, you know, a good amount of inflows. So they're soaking up all the things, but I think it's just like a switching of hands and a slow point. Yes, there will be a supply shock at some point. Yes, Grayscale will run out of this time. Yes, I understand that. But I gotta tell you, 200,000 over three months, you know, it was 200,000 Bitcoin themselves, MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy just by itself, this is from Bitcoin Treasury. You can see that they have over, they have 214,246 Bitcoin. So yes, I understand that, uh, you know, things are a little bit different now. And I can see, I can see the point. I think, again, I think this is, this is great timing for us as, as time goes on. But then people will say, but Rob, what about the macro? Because, you know, Jerome Powell is higher for longer. Uh, we're doing quantitative tightening. It doesn't seem there's not as much or near as quantitative easing. We see some uh, signs of weakness in the uh, in the economy itself. And of course, you know, we've got massive debt. And I got to agree with you. But I will say this. This is from the U.S. debt clock. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but it's fascinating. Because you can just see the U.S. US national debt. Every time I turn this thing on, it's like another trillion. National debt is over $34 trillion here in the U.S. I don't know where you're at, but we love debt. And... You can see that the federal debt to GDP ratio, usually don't want this anywhere near 80%. And we're at 122%. This is what backs essentially the money printing. We're 122% debt to GDP ratio. And it's never, it's not going to go down. The only way out of this situation of what we're doing right here, I hate to say it, it it's going to be some money printing. And the printer's gonna go burr. And what happens when the printer goes burr? Well, it's very simple. If you take the M2 money supply and overlay, this, that's, that's everything in red right here, and overlay it with anything, S&P 500, what do you notice? As the money goes up, so does the S&P 500. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Roughly the same thing. Let's take a look at, oh, our favorite. How about the total market cap of crypto? Same thing. How about if we just take like just Bitcoin itself? Look at that, just straight up. Uh, Bitcoin, because that's the king. Psst, roughly the same thing, because that's the, that's the number one crypto of, that's going to be f for a long time. I don't think anything's going to flip that. And then people will say, but you don't understand because you know we've never gone up in quantitative tightening. Yeah, we have. Yes, we have. And you can just see right here, yes, in March 2022, as we, of course, came out of the largest bull run, uh, not for crypto itself, but for, for, for most markets, you can see that, yeah, we dropped off and we were consolidating. We were quantitative tightening, but look what happens. Even though we're going down, see that blue mark? That's Bitcoin. It has gone up. ETFs helped a lot. I still say that we're going to turn the money printers back on. And when that happens, I think there should be some quite explosion of prices. I could be wrong. Let me know where I'm wrong here in the comment section. And uh, that'll take part of that. Again, I think it's just, if you just stick around, I think it's very hard to screw this up, but who knows? So there's that piece. And then also I want to talk about this real quick. Uh, HBAR Foundation, this was a big news. I was going to do a live stream yesterday, but I just put out a uh, pre-recorded video, which talked about dynamic DCA. You can check that video out in the playlist. But the HBAR Foundation put this out. It said, today we witness uh, real world asset history as Black BlackRock's US Treasury Money Market Fund, or MMF, is tokenized on Hedera. Now that part's true. This was done by Arca X and owner AIO, making a major milestone in asset management, bringing the world's largest asset manager on chain. Which I gotta tell you, when I saw this, I'm like, well, I should probably buy some Hedera because this only makes sense, right? This whole market, if you haven't figured this out, is mostly moved by sentiment. And even though people say, well, smart money says, smart money doesn't know what they're doing. Smart money is also emotional as well. Not all of them, but I can tell you, I've met a lot of smart money people and they're not any smarter than you. I can tell you that. Speaking of this, <clears throat> this came out. H, H bar up 96% after a misinterpreted BlackRock announcement. And here we go. A misinterpreted announcement by the HBAR Foundation suggests that BlackRock's ICS US Treasury Fund was tokenized on the Hedera blockchain in partnership with ARCA-X and Onera. 
leading to a significant misunderstanding and a 96% increase into HBARTH. However, BlackRock had no direct involvement in the tokenization process, as clarified by, I guess, Cardano Ghost Fund. Chris O'Connor, who criticized the way the announcement was framed, emphasizing that the misinterpre misinterpretation caused unwarranted excitement among influencers. That's me. That's true. And this was actually put out as well. Cointelegraph says, hey, even though this happened, ArcX co-founder and CEO Graham Rutherford said, it was indeed an ArcX choice to put BlackRock's fund on Hedera, but everyone involved was aware. I'm not going to speculate. I don't have... I mean, that's what we're here for, speculating and all, let's be honest. But the way it was framed, it seemed like there was direct involvement and that really wasn't what it was. I put this out and I said, hey, I bought a Derek and I bought a dare an hour ago. The news broke that they're doing real world assets with BlackRock. The whole industry is native narrative driven. This was April 23rd, yesterday. And then when I saw that article and them talking about it, and Hedera keeps keeps the Hedera Foundation keeps putting it out, which is if they want to do that, that's fine. But that's not for me. I sold it all. So not my finest moment, but I'm not going to support something like that. And it may work out for them, I can say, but just be aware that when news comes out and things like that, we can do our own research, right? People say, do your own research, everything else. Well, that came from the foundation. If they're going to word it like that, it seems a little bit funny. So for me, not a good idea to uh, get into that, but I got to tell you, I mean, it was a nice profit in 24 hours. Now, could Hedera go to the moon? Sure, I guess. I don't really, that's that's fine. And if you own Hedera, Hash Ref, you can tell me uh, how great it is and how it's going to do well. And I'll, I'll probably agree with you. Because, like I've said before, in the bull run, everything goes off. And uh, Adara could be no different. But uh, for me, I'm not going to stick around with this one as just there's some ways that it was said. And I'm just not a big fan of those situations. So there's that piece. And then to wrap this up, SEC. So in the title, I said the SEC won. Well, they didn't. They lost, but they still win. And I'm going to tell you why. And this, I'm not going to go over this very quick. I'll go over this very quickly. The SEC faces the big court bill after sanctions. Debtbox says they have spent nearly three quarters of a million dollars fighting the SEC's claims. If you don't remember this one, this is with the SEC. It was two spe specific lawyers who have already stepped down from the SEC stated that Debtbox was transferring all funds out of the country. That was untrue. They knew it was untrue. They actually transferred funds from one bank in the United States to another bank in the United States. And they made them freeze their accounts, even though they knew that was wrong. And those two lawyers stepped down. I'm not here to say that the SEC is totally corrupt, but those two guys stepped outside the boundaries. So they're going to face sanctions. And when I say that the SEC wins, it's because of this. Who do you think is going to pay that bill? Three quarters of a million. Does it come out of Gary's pocket? I don't think so. It's come out of our pockets. And that's how the beauty of taxes work. And, I'm, and people will say, well, taxes are very important. So we can uh, build bridges and uh, build roads. And that's what uh, funds the whole ecosystem. I'm not going to argue with that as well. But I'm just saying that when we pay taxes and they're mismanaged, and of course, the three-letter agency of the SEC is going against those exchanges that, of course, are what will be good for us. I don't know about debt box. But these are the things that happen. So congratulations to the SEC. Even though you lost, you won because they have unlimited pockets from taxes. And then lastly, three years. And this is from, actually, this is the SEC. This is the Department of Justice. Uh, <clears throat> the U.S. Department of Justice is recommending a 36-month prison sentence for Cheng Peng Zhao. CZ Binance, and that is scheduled for April 30th. Now, CZ has already come out and said, look, I was wrong, and I should have uh, uh, been a little bit more forthcoming as far as the AML and KYC process, but uh, this is where we're at, and uh, we'll see what happens. But three years, and you can read it. I'll, you can just follow me on, on X, and you can find this out. But again, <sighs> that's where the tax dollars go, and that's what we have. So that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing when we talk about it's time sensitive. Tomorrow um, is NFA Live, me, Ben in the Cryptoverse, and Lee Jessica from Coin Bureau as we talk a little bit about who knows what we'll talk about. But that'll be tomorrow for the live stream, 9 a.m. Eastern Town Time. But that's it for today. So again, if you gotta take off, take off.